Hello and welcome to the Voluntary Virtues Network. I am your host, Mr. Ancap, and this is my show, The State Sucks. So last week, just giving a brief summary, I made a video about regulations in the market and how the state is there to fucking fuck over people for the purpose of financial extortion. And I alluded to, or straight out said, I didn't rewatch the video, don't quote me, that I was going to follow up with talking specifically about the healthcare market and how government regulations screw everyone over. This is me doing that. So this is my video on healthcare regulation. So, to talk about healthcare regulations and why they're sucky, we first need to look at the motivation behind them and why they're so fucking bullshit. Right, so the idea behind the healthcare market regulations is simply that, like with everything else, people are afraid. Right, they're afraid of what's going to happen when they go see this doctor, if they get this medication or whatever, and what causes this fear? This fear is not natural. This isn't just around. This is government fabrication. Government shows up and says you're going to die without us. People think, oh my god, am I going to die without us? I wasn't thinking about this before. I just went and saw this doctor who kept saving my life, and I never once thought he was going to kill me. Oh my god. And so that is where the government steps in. So there's a few reasons why the government likes to get involved in the healthcare market. First of all, when, when government gets involved, new stipulations are made. Right? You know, you have the, the AMA who, who want, you know, all these, all these tests and hoops everyone has to jump through in order to be doctors. Now, for the longest time, there was multiple methods by which somebody became a doctor. Either they trained under a physician for years, you know, uh, sort of like a stewardship, where they would basically be glued to the hip to a doctor, and as the years came on, they'd learn more information, and they would then become doctors. Uh, now, of course, you know, you have the university system. You, you know, you go learn, uh, you get taught, and then you go out and be doctors. There's a lot of ways anyone can come by the information necessary. Now, of course, when anyone wants to make a lot of money in a market, they want to sequester the market on who can work where when. Right? This is a lot of what happens when government gets involved and say you have to get this degree or you have to get this many years at this type of university before you can do it. I would not at all be shocked if there are states right now where you need a college degree to be an interior decorator. Right? That's just it 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 keeps people from getting involved in the market, which makes the people involved in the market already much more valuable and helps them out. But as a greater narrative for why the state wants control over the healthcare market is because it is a necessity, right? Or at least from a market standpoint, something that, um, that everybody wants, right? Uh, much like food, water, shelter, this is all the areas government wants to get its hands in and get its claws neck deep in. Now, of course, there are no such thing as needs, right? I get into a lot of trouble when I bring this up with people. There are only things people want and things people want a lot. When people want things a lot, like food, water, and so on, they have a tendency to call these things needs and necessities. And the government preys upon this misconception and says, this isn't something people just, so just want. This is a right. This is what people deserve. And that's when you get government spokespeople saying, health care is a right. Uh, what else do they say? Education is a right. All this stuff is a right. Because they mess with this false uh, perception that there are some things that are necessities. Right? So, healthcare is a right. Now, of course, what, what does it mean when you want to say healthcare is a right? Well, what you're saying is that people just deserve it. Right? Much like the right to speak, the right to self defense. See, these are all simply abilities people have. When you start looking at what's fundamental rights, they're just abilities people have. Once we start talking about people outside of ourselves, something they owe us, that is no longer a right, that is simply theft and extortion. Okay, so how does, how does government's regulation in the market hurt? Well, we can look at places like the USSR, right? Just give the biggest, best example. Uh, total totalitarian regime over the healthcare market resulted in people going to black market shady-ass places to get their healthcare done. Uh, what we see right now in, in, in the United States and even in the Western societies is we see government get involved in healthcare in a lot of unique ways. Right? There are, there are basically, um, there are three countries I like to look at with healthcare. I like to look at Canada, I like to look at Japan, and then I like to look at the United States. Because it's basically a, it's basically talking about degrees by which the government gets involved in the healthcare market. Now, Canada, ridiculously amount. Right? I mean, anyone who's looked at the Canadian healthcare system, uh, it's cheaper cheaper than the United States, but they trade in high costs for high wait times. I mean, you really got to get started in the Canadian healthcare system at a young age when you have time to wait, right? You got to get this type of physician who can authorize these types of treatments. You got to go from here to there and back again. We're talking months just to find out if you're actually dying. <coughs> and and that's the, that's the situation at hand, right? Um, in the United States, you have people going into debt for trying to, like, get this surgery or whatever. 
In Canada, you have to have people who are wondering if they're going to lose a limb because they can't get this infection seen to in time, and so amputation becomes a necessity. Now, of course, in Canada, um, what they like to tout is the fact that their emergency response and medical teams are free, that they are quick, that they are, you know, if you're dying, you get to cut in front of everybody, which is, yay, fantastic, except that it pushes everyone back, keeping them from having worse illnesses. But no debt, right? No one's going into debt, and this is the big game of the government. This is the shell game, right? The Canadian individual citizen isn't going into debt. The country's going into debt. The people who have to wait in line are losing limbs. But true, that person is not in trouble yet. It needs to be made very clear. So that's the con game of the socialist healthcare model, right? That everything's good now, don't really give a fuck about later. So what's next? Next, we're going to look at the USA, right? I know what you're thinking. What? I thought the USA was, was very free market and very awesome. Shouldn't we focus on it last? Actually, no. Japan is much more close to a free market than the United States healthcare. I know it doesn't look like it, right? Japan has a model by which the taxpayer, the government covers, like, a lot of the expense on the basic shit. The moment you go up into high-end stuff, that's where the individual and their insurance company step in, right? But whether you're talking about the, no the normal stuff or whether you're talking about the insurance paying for the higher-level stuff, Japan's healthcare prices are much cheaper, irregardless, right? And, and it's because of the very big distinction between the, uh, the Japanese healthcare market and the United States. See, Japan just wants to write a check. Right, it, it, for the lower cost stuff, the taxpayers will write a check, and that will mess with prices. It'll make you spend more. It'll make innovation difficult. But it's a much better use of government in the market if people want to want to go down that road than what the United States model does. What the United States government does, it doesn't come in. It doesn't just underwrite everything. What it does is it uses the force of legislation to give the insurance companies the power to dictate prices. That's it in a nutshell. I know that may scare some of you, but that's a fact. Right? Here's what happens. Here's just the broad strokes. So, let's say you want to get an EKG, right? And let's say that the doctor says, eh, that'll be 20 bucks, right? That's the EKG price. That's just, that's just a number I'm pulling out of my head, but using it as a baseline. Then you have the insurance company who comes in, and they say, hmm, this is a nice EKG. How about this, right? I will pay you $100 every time someone uses this EKG from my insurance plan. And the doctor will be like, Okay, five times more. I, I don't know why you're doing that, but okay, fair point. So when your people come in, I will charge you 100 And so they do this. Ah, but then the insurance company runs to daddy government and says, <laughs> Government, that mean doctor is ch undercutting us with people who are uninsured. <laughs> and so the government comes in and says, hey, you got to charge everybody equally. Because remember, that's the big socialist touting point, right? That's cultural Marxism in a nutshell. Everything has to be equal. Everything has to be blanket statements. Right, And so, by virtue of the magical powers of government legislation, now you have uh, uninsured people being charged five times what they should be, all because insurance companies say they'll pay a little more. Oh, but it gets so much better. It gets so much better. Now, since insurance companies, through the power of government, are able to completely fuck with the market, they can do anything they want with it. Right? I mean... Um, a lot of hospitals in the United States are currently undergoing financial difficulties because insurance companies are not paying out like they're supposed to, and that's because it is such a fucking ridiculous minefield you have to play in order to get insurance companies to pay out. Like, they'll take you to court and they'll look at this form. Hmm, oh, you didn't adopt this I and cross this T. Well, this form is now invalid. Or they'll say that you didn't give their, uh, you didn't give their patient adequate medical care. Or let's say their patient comes in with a gunshot wound. Their, their insurance guy. Right, and you treat the gun wound, you treat the, the trauma, you treat all this stuff, but you miss like a rug burn or a hangnail. Right, they'll say, oh, mm, oh, mm. well, you didn't give them satisfactory treatment, so boom. And so you're looking at maybe one out of every ten insurance plans paying. Right, but you get by because they're paying, they're demanding money from such an obscene level. Right, they're already overcharging people, so it's not like the actual cost of medicine reflects how much you have to pay. Right, so they have a lot of leeway in terms of how much it's going to fuck over a hospital. But in the long run, this is why we're having a lot of problems in the in hospitals and holding down uh, doctors and nurses and making sure we can stay open and facilitate people is because it's it's catching up. This not paying out thing. And what's hilarious about the socialists, the liberals, the Democrats, what have you, is that 
what they don't know is that Medicare, Medicaid, basically any government insurance pays out less than the most evil corporation. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The most evil healthcare corporation will still pay out more to hospitals than the fucking than the fucking uh than the government, right? The Medicare market. It's completely fucking loony. Oh, and then we get people like Paul Krugman. We get people like Paul Krugman. He'll come out, and he's a big government guy. He's a Keynesian economist. And what's fucking hilarious is that he's actually good at economics when it has nothing to do with government. Right? He's got this weird thing where whenever government comes up, he just he, he abandons his reason and his, his fucking educational history and just goes with it. It's a damn to say. But he was asked, I don't remember, I don't have the quote in front of me, uh, but he was talking about how, you know, VAs are something to aspire for. That, you know, if we if we were in the, um, if, if government ran healthcare, we'd all have, have attention like at the VA. And, of course, those of you who have even the briefest of knowledge of the VA know recently, like, they've gotten a lot of trouble because they're letting people die. Right? They're putting people on fucking waiting lists and these people are dying before they can get to the fucking, to the fucking VA. Now, of course, this is not news for anyone who knows anything about the, the VA hospitals. Right? Veterans Affairs hospitals. Uh, because um, they're just terrible. They have a long history of screwing people over, right? Um, they, they, they. And what's funny is they're shady about it. They're really fucking shady, right? So like they'll they'll say that you know when you get on a waiting list you don't have to wait any more than like fifteen or thirty days. What they don't tell you is you have to wait months to get put on that waiting list, right? That's the shadiness. They um they they like to they like to cut off patients who are on medication. Right, like you know, you're talking about a, a soldier who has PTSD. Right, comes over, he gets put on mood stabilizers to help him, you know, level out from the trauma. They'll cut him off cold turkey, cut him straight off cold. And what happens when you take somebody, put them on mood stabilizers? You cannot cut them off cold turkey because they go, they freak the fuck out. Their emotions get all over the place, and they become a danger to themselves or others. But people don't give a shit about this. Right, the only time the VA ever actually gets any national fucking condemnation is when you actually do have motherfuckers dying in the streets, and that's that's government health care. That's all government healthcare is. It's a complete fucking loony, loony time. And I, I don't... Ah, it's just... It's all of it. I, it's just... It's... It's it's the shadow effect, right? Because it's not like with Canada or with Japan where the government's right there in terms of expense and what's being paid for where by who. It's shadier. It's just maneuvering events to where the only end result is everybody gets fucked over. Right, and what's it's 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 funny when you look at Obamacare, which is not socialized medicine. That needs to be made very clear. This is fascism, because all it's doing is saying that you have to buy from these pre-approved insurance companies, and if you do not, you get fucking extorted through taxation. So fucking no win lose situation here, right? Um, the the fucking insurance companies make money, the government's making money from lobbyists, but you, Joe the fucking plumber somewhere, you're fucked. And of course, what happens when you make a product? Uh, what happens when you make a product necessary? What happens when you make people have to buy a product? Well, the price is going to go up. Of course the price is going to go up. They have a new market demand for it. They have to keep buying it. And so fucking up it up. And not to mention the fact that Obamacare says that um, people with pre, uh, pre-existing conditions, right, they, um, they, have to, um, they have to be accepted, right? And of course, what does this mean to the insurance company? Well, what this is saying is, hey... You know, imagine for a moment we are dealing with um, with fire insurance, right? Imagine if we are dealing with um, with uh, you know houses being burned down. You know, we have to pay for it. Well, um, now what the fucking government is saying is that hey, people can buy insurance before or after their houses burn down. So of course, people who buy insurance before their the houses burn down, people who buy insurance before they get sick have to be charged even more because now they need to offset the cost of people who are just going to wait until bad things happen and then buy insurance. Right? There's this whole, there's this weird new incentive structure in the healthcare market. It's completely loony. Right? And, I mean, it's just, it's weird. Man, it is just so fucking weird. And there's all kinds of just little rules. Like, there's state-by-state state rules I couldn't even fucking want to look into. Right? Let alone be able to, because it's crazy. Like, I know one thing is you cannot buy, for some reason, I don't know what's up with this, you cannot buy out-of-state insurance. Right? Uh, I don't know what's up, but apparently I cannot go over to, like, uh, Massachusetts, right, and say, hey, hey, Massachusetts Insurance Company, I'm over here in fucking, uh, in what, what's really far away, in California, right, okay, and I want to buy your insurance because your, your prices are cheaper. I can't do that. I have to buy Californian insurance at Californian prices for California IA. 
And of course, what does this do? This just sequesters the market even more. It makes it even more expensive to deal with insurance companies. Imagine for a moment. It's no longer out-of-state insurance. It's out-of-county insurance. It's out-of-city insurance. It's out-of-square-block insurance. The moment you make it so people have less options in the market, the more you allow oligarchs to form. Monopolies, even, in some fields. It's tough to make an actual monopoly um, in the market because there's so many lobbyists and so much of this, but oligarchs you can definitely pull off with government help. And so um, and so that is that is the situation as we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the broad, the broad strokes of the, uh, of the healthcare market. And, of course, we could go on. Right, the, the, the cost of becoming a doctor also fa factors in. There's the fact that the best surgeon makes as much as the, like, not, maybe not the worst surgeon, but definitely he's not being paid based, well, surgeons aren't paid based off quality of service, the best and the worst. They get paid off of, you know, who they help, whether the insurance company will provide, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. In fact, it's very fucking annoying to become a surgeon in the modern age, right? Because just the cash payout, because it's, it's harder, it's more intense. Uh, more, more, more study than just going off to be like a pediatrician. So a lot of people are turned off to the idea of becoming surgeons because it's just such a such a degree of work for how little the payout is, right? I mean, just it's it's the healthcare market is totally fucked, totally fucked. It's just mm, it's totally loony, right? You have right even in terms of even in terms of stuff like um like um like therapy, for example, therapy. They won't pay the fucking therapist, right, from the insurance company's perspective, until they have a diagnosis, right? They won't. They won't even fucking. They won't pay it, right? And so, um, so what that does is that makes it just that it it, it 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 causes not people to have to focus on individuals, right? It just basically causes them to have to put like a mile marker down and be like, hey, this is what we're kind of going for, right? And it just it makes it difficult because now you have it's not like you're trying to work towards something you don't even know if you're working at. I mean, it's one fucking visit. Right, but that's the way the market works, man. They don't they don't want you to feel that they say, Okay, you better put a fucking disease down. Okay, fuck. And not to mention the fact that um they used to, in terms of therapeutic medicine, they used to like to test you. Right? They used to like to give you IQ tests, Myers Briggs tests, just all these kind of tests to try to get a feel out for who you are mentally, where you're at here, emotionally, all this stuff. Uh, I, I believe it was the uh, I believe it was psychiatrists who used to do that. Psychiatry, psychology, the the difference between the two really is um which one which one dispenses pills in order to stabilize mood? That's where I think psychiatrist is the pillar. But yeah, so they used to do tests a lot, but now insurance companies say they don't want to pay for that, and so tests are a thing of the past, right? It's just, it's just, it's arbitrary, right? The, the insurance companies totally dominate the market. But this is where the liberals come and they say, "Haha, see, this is why we need a government." No, they only dominate the market because of government. Without government involvement. They can name any price they want. They can name any conditions they want. If they're too fucking ridiculous about it, hospitals just won't deal with them. They'll charge whatever the fuck they want to whomever they want at whatever time. They'll follow whatever rules they feel appropriate that will get them good fucking medical care for their patients. That's it. And I, I will say the biggest problem with American healthcare is the inflated prices caused by the government's involvement. Right? Insurance company jacks up the price, which cr uses the government to enforce that drive-up price, causes people to need to go buy insurance. It's as simple as that. That little tactic alone is what will cause people to get fucked over in the long run. Not to mention everything else you build up upon, the not paying out, the stipulation of rules for treatments, the this, the that, the other. It's complete lunacy. So that's my broad strokes on the state sucks U.S. healthcare market. Uh, you know, this is really just supposed, this is a companion piece to my other regulations video. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, Canada's problem, wait times. Uh, the U.S.'s problems, price. And Japan's problem, not as severe since they're closer to the market, I will grant you that. But yeah, there is the taxpayer difficulties of having to offset insurance, I mean healthcare prices. There is, I guarantee they mess with doctors' pay, probably try to do some fixed pay for doctors and so on. Uh, but generally, if we had to pick a model, outside of course pure free market, Japan would be the closest. Right? Japan would be the, if you need state involvement, eh, you want to go that route. Uh, but, of course, Japan doesn't get a lot of love, right? Everyone wants to go Canadian. Everyone wants to go UK, regardless of all the drama that comes out of that. Uh, everyone hates the U.S. market and yet falsely attributes it as a free market effect as opposed to a government plus insurance companies equal fascism effect. Um, 
But yeah, and of course some people will say, because liberals love to say that if we could just get rid of the evil, greedy people, the market inherently demands evil, greedy people. Because the government wants money. The, the state wants to reward its politicians, right? You know, the politicians want to use the power of the state to make themselves a little cush, right? To get themselves a little money in the bank. Uh, and so they immediately create incentives in the environment to promote lobbying. Hey, if you throw me some money, I'll do regulations to help you out. You can kill your competition out. Two birds, one stone, baby. You'll make money, I'll make money. It's a win-win. So it's inherent in the market to, to cause, to cause um, corruption and, and malicious behavior to form. That's just a fact of it. But yeah, guys, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it off here. Again, this is really just a companion piece for my other video. I just thought healthcare warranted a more specific view. But um, yeah, so let me know what you guys think. I really want some input here because I'm running out of ideas for shows. So please, in the comment section, give me some... Give me some thoughts. Give me some insights. Give me some of this, that, and the other. Okay, guys, take care.